morning, and welcome to St. Mark's this morning. It's good to be home, and it's good to see all of you, all of you today. Uh, a couple of announcements before before we begin, um, and the first is that. Um, there are 15 copies of, of this book of daily meditations that um, I've ordered for the congregation and, and they're in. Uh, they're available at, in the uh, church office. And if you, if you are able to uh, cover the cost, it's $15. If not, don't worry about it. Just, just please, please take one because I'd like as many as many of us as possible to have this uh, this little devotional. I, I said a few words about it before I left, and they're they're really just just one page meditations. Now, a meditation is is slightly different from a devotional. Okay, so if you do your daily devotions, please continue to do that. But this this is. Uh, meditation is is more of a process of, of of thinking quietly about our relationship with God, and they are arranged. There's no dates on them, but what I'm asking is that we just begin at the beginning, and as soon as you get yours, you can begin reading, um, and read one day one day at a time throughout the year. And then this is also what we're going to use for our spiritual reading group. Now, if you are not able to be involved in the spiritual reading group, that's fine. We'd still love you. I'd still love for you to be able to, uh, to have the book and read along. But, but then what we're going to do for our spiritual reading group is simply um, each month when we gather, and I have not set the first date for that yet. I'll let you know next Sunday when that will be. When we gather, I'm just going to ask you, which, which of these particular daily uh, meditations challenged you or help you, know, thought, help you think of, of your own life and, and your faith with God in a, in, a new, in a new way? And so these are available. You can pick them up anytime at the church, at the church office. And if we need more, that, will be, that would be a wonderful, a wonderful thing. We want to, uh, first of all, remember our, our sister B on the death of her, of her daughter. Um, so, so please keep uh, B Alamein in, in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, give her a call, send her a card. Um, to my knowledge, there's, there is no, uh, nothing has been set yet. Uh, regarding any type of funeral or memorial service, but but just uh, please surround please surround B uh, with your love. She's been such a a wonderful part of this congregation for so many years, and she is still so active. And and so we keep her we keep her uh, more than in our thoughts and prayers um, in the coming weeks. I, I pray that we surround her with with our love together. And then um, we can also surround with our love and celebrate um, the, the birth of a new granddaughter. Um, while I was away, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl uh, or is it grandson or granddaughter? Granddaughter. I uh, had, had, had a granddaughter, I understand, while I was away. And, and so please, um, please celebrate with her and, and keep uh, her and her family in, in, in our love in the, coming, in the coming months and weeks. And we also, of course, continue to pray for um, our musician, uh, Norman Miller. Uh, Norman, uh, as you probably are aware, had, had a, a, a surgery and um, there have been some complications around that, and so he continues to need to need our pr love and prayers for his healing. 
Are there any announcements? Uh, we, so we will not, because I have a, I have a uh, synodical continuing education event on Tuesday, so I will not be starting the pastor's Bible study on the Gospel of Mark this Tuesday. We will begin that the following, the following Tuesday, which is uh, Shrove Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday, which is also Valentine's Day this year. So, um, there will be Ash Wednesday services both at one o'clock and at seven o'clock on Ash Wednesday. Both services will include um, the sacraments of Holy Communion and the imposition of, of ashes. If you have not already picked up your, um, your uh, uh, giving envelopes for 2024, they are located uh, right back over there. Uh, it's in the corner of, of the church, and we would encourage you to pick those, to pick those up um, today as you are, or as you are able. Are there any other announcements from the congregation today? Sure, Howie, come on. Okay, we're going to talk about a talking donkey at adult at the adult forum, and hopefully, um, it, it's it's a character from the Bible that we'll be talking about, and uh, not not any of us. Any any other announcements? Okay, uh, Alice. Come to church and bring a date for Valentine's. That sounds, I like that idea. I like that idea, thank you. I just wonder if you look in the pew there, you see some hymnals and also a Bible. They are from the generosity of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and also Grace Lutheran Church in South Park. The, uh, the Bibles came from uh, the organist Norm Miller's brother who belonged, to, uh, who belonged to that church. And the other one was a church that my sister-in-law went to. So thanks to uh, Joanne and Joan and uh, Norm, Dorm, Norm, Dorm, Dorm, <laughs> excuse me, not Dom, uh, and also Susan Early and uh, Nelson early. We went out on the 15th of uh, January, the day after the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church had their final worship service. And my sister-in-law told me it was a beautiful service, a service of basically joy and thanksgiving for all the years that the church was able to meet in the church. And part of the agreement is that, you know, they were selling their church, and they had to get everything out by the 31st. So the uh, six, five of us went over there and were trying to ask people what we thought we needed, and somebody had said the hymnals. So uh, I went over thinking I was only going to get about 10 of them. But I got there, and there was like 60 of them, and uh, nobody seemed to be taking them. So <laughs> I picked them up, and those are the red hymnals. And we thank you for that. We also got two new flags, replacing the older flags we had. And there's also, people were always complaining in Sunday school, they had us sit on those hard folding chairs. Well, I was able to get uh, 13 of those padded chairs and also a chair for the Meals on Wheels desk. So the Lord did supply for us. And I'll tell you, even though you're a mixed feelings of taking them they were so happy we could take them and there were several churches there and helping them get rid of all the things they had to get rid of by the third and we got stuff for the kitchen <laughs> Joan was over there Joan was over there looking all around and soothing they were taking the things they thought they needed. but I do want to thank those congregations for the gifts that they gave to us and uh 
It's a great, great God, I'll tell you that. Amen. 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 Even in the midst of, of death, there is new life. And uh, at least my understanding is that is it, uh, at Good Shepherd, there were maybe two different congregations that most of the congregate that most of the members that had been at Good Shepherd are now attending kind of in mass so that they that they are not alone but that they are being received by other Lutheran congregations um, in the in the local area. So we thank God. We thank God for that. Any other congregate any other announcements today? Any God sightings that people wish to share? If, go ahead, okay. Come on forward, Jean. There you go. Oh, good morning. So nice to see you all here. I think spring is on the way. <laughs> At least my heart is saying that new life. I just want to say to you, no matter what's going on in your life, God is there. Yes. No matter how much pain, no matter how much sorrow, we can have joy in our heart because God is our refuge and strength and always there. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Let us take a moment now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us be at prayer. Please stand as you are able. And my understanding is that, is that we do have um, almost all of the music on uh, recorded and, and therefore we will be able to, to sing all. The only thing you uh, will want to take note of is that for the gospel acclamation, shine Jesus shine. It, it begins with the verse, not with the refrain. And so we will sing uh, the verse first, followed by the refrain. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. We 
we come to you for healing, Lord, of body, mind, and soul, and pray that by your Spirit's touch we may again be whole. As of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. someone in the world in your world suffers you suffer as well restore your world and heal your children so that no one needs to suffer any longer amen the congregation may be seated as we hear god's holy word today and as alice makes her way forward i want i just want to notice that one of our prayer concerns walked in for so many weeks we've been praying for elsie and so it's great to see her uh it's great to see her today bless you elsie and good to have you the word the reading is psalm 146 praise the lord praise the lord O my soul i will praise the lord as long as i live 
I will sing praises to my God with all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord, their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Verse 1. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with them. But a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, the hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? 
But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and he took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and they went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means in Arabic, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this. And he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living God and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The people around Jesus tried again and again to fence him in, to close the circle around him. His family wanted him back in their home in Nazareth. His disciples would not allow children to approach him. The crowd around him told the poor and the blind in the gutters of the streets to forget about him. He had not come for them. He was not supposed to talk to women in the street and definitely not with the one at a well in Samaria the Pharisees and scribes wanted Jesus to restrict himself to them, to the saintly and the legally pure. His disciples wanted him to remain with them in Galilee. And when he told them that he was going to Jerusalem, they all advised him not to go. Jesus always escaped those attempts to fence him in. He told his mother and sister and brothers that not just them, but all of humanity is his family. He ordered his disciples to allow the children to come to him. He stopped in the crowd and asked them to bring him the poor and the blind who were shouting for him. He talked with the women, even the one from Samaria at that well. He sat down with sinners and with whomever those others might have thought impure. He left the countryside and went to Jerusalem. And that trying to Close the circle was not only something that happened then and there around him, it happens, it happens with us when coming together in his name. We build a church, even though we never ask for buildings, and we start to know each other and care for one another. And we make coffee and tea and donuts for after worship. We pray for one another when we're sick. We celebrate with one another when, with, with weddings and, and the births of grandchildren, for birthdays and baptisms. We mourn. We mourn and comfort each other. 
during deaths and disasters. And B, I pray you hear our love for you this day. And yet, and yet so many of our congregations are getting smaller and smaller to the point where like Grace Lutheran and Good Shepherd Lutheran have so recently closed. And yet we're reminded that even in the midst of death, God brings forth new life. We have to admit that even our young ones, our children, our grandchildren, even our great-grandchildren escape and leave. But hear me, sisters and brothers, Jesus never leaves us. Amen. Amen. Jesus never leaves us. Jesus refuses to leave a single one of us lost and alone. He wasn't like that. He constantly fought against people being left alone, and he constantly fought to bring them in to the love of God. In the gospel today, there's that woman who was bleeding for 12 years. Imagine. Don't miss that little clause that says she had apparently spent all her money for doctors, all of it, and none of them could heal her. She'd been bleeding for over 12 years, and what this meant, not only physically, but, but socially, she was considered impure. She had the type of impurity blood, a flow of blood, a kind of contagion that was believed to infect anyone who touched her or be, who came near to her. Even if they touched her unwillingly or unknowingly, they themselves were believed to become impure and untouchable too. But Jesus didn't care. He wanted the public to hear that she had touched him because he knew what had happened. He had felt that power going out of him and he wanted to teach everyone a lesson, the lesson of widening one's circle all the time, widening one's circle, not shrinking it. So she came forward, the unnamed woman with the flow of blood. In fear and trembling, she came forward while everyone was making room and giving way so as not to touch her. And what does Jesus do? But he says to her that her faith had healed her. He admired her, an impure one. He pray, praised her, a sick one. And the people were amazed and scandalized, just as we would be amazed and scandalized if he joined us, coming in with his friends, the children and the poor, the blind and the deaf, the crippled and the mute, perhaps parading down the center aisle, breaking into our circle because of his love, because of his concern and compassion and forgiveness, not only for you and me, but for all of us. Isn't that just like Jesus? constantly widening the circle, always including, never excluding. 
oh, it sounds nice, I guess, until you actually get specific. I mean, what if that includes those who smell bad and those with contagious diseases? What if it includes the child with Tourette's syndrome who bursts out with obscenities in the middle of the worship service that they can't control? The man with a long history of spousal abuse, and everybody knows it. The woman who spends all day drinking and all night doing who knows what with everyone knows who to pay the rent. And then there's the billionaire who pays his employees minimum wage and, and the TV evangelist with all kinds of skeletons in the closet. And there's the Samaritan woman at the well. And there's you. And there's me. And there's that baby that just kept screaming and crying on my nine-hour flight from Frankfurt to D.C. when I desperately just wanted to sleep. Isn't that just like Jesus? I arrived in Kenya on January 11th, a day late because... I missed my first flight because of bad weather between Pittsburgh and D.C. When I arrived, I learned that my dear friend Karen's 87-year-old father had just died the previous day. And so the first 10 days of my trip became preoccupied with the rituals and customs of Kenyan funerals. It turns out that Karen's father's funeral was on my birthday. So on my birthday, we got up real early. We met at Karen, we met at the, the funeral parlor in, in Nairobi at 7 a.m. to drive her father's body home to to his hometown of Yada, three hours away. There were over 100 cars in the procession for three hours, one way. And that wasn't the half of it. When we arrived at the Shamba, the farm, where Karen's father was buried, and walked around the side of the house. Trees had been cut down, even, even crops had, had, had been harvested just to make room for multiple large tents and probably 1,000 rented chairs set up for the funeral. Turns out that wasn't nearly enough chairs. At 11 a.m., the family began serving the nearly 1,500 people that showed up. Christians and Muslims, rich and poor, young and old. The family must have slaughtered dozens and dozens of goats and chicken and cattle to feed the crowd because, again, that's the custom. At 1 p.m., the funeral service began with over a dozen pastors. There were two 30-member choirs and a 25-member African liturgical dance group, and they all sang and danced. But most important, there were all those people including family from literally around the world people of every size, color, and shape together on a family farm back bumpy dirt roads 45 minutes from the closest paved road in the blazing hot sun of a January day. Still my birthday, mind you. We 
You see, it turns out that Karen's father, who, who was actually her uncle, but became her father because she was orphaned at a very young age. He was someone who just had a way of bringing people together. The entire mountainside, and I mean the whole mountainside, think Pittsburgh, think north side or south side, mostly south side. He brought the whole mountainside together and they are all they were people who were grateful to him for overseeing a local but massive irrigation project that turned gullies into small cement lined waterways that irrigated thousands and thousands of small peasant farms. That irrigation system literally saved families, farms, and lives for miles around. And they were all there to show and pay their respects. At the end of the day, one of the grandchildren remarked about the 1,500 people who showed up the for the funeral and said, it's good we didn't actually publish his death in the newspaper. It was true. He didn't want his death published in the newspaper. He wanted it to bring people together. In the Gospels, the Greek word that's translated to save is sozo, S-O-Z-O, sozo, which also means to heal. It's not a particularly religious word in the Greek. It means to heal or to make whole, both physically and socially to heal or to make whole. That's Jesus' desire for all people, for the whole world, for all of creation, to heal us all and to make us whole together. So that when one is sick, so that when one is mourning, that the rest of the whole community is there to encourage and to comfort and to care. To heal us all and to make us whole together. That's what it means literally to be saved. Not by exclusion, but by inclusion by an ever-widening circle that includes us all. Today, Jesus starts in the Gospels by saving just two. Just two. That's all he saved that day. An unnamed woman with a 12-year hemorrhage of blood and a 12 year old unnamed little girl. It's definitely not it, 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 it's it's intended let me say it that this way it's intended for us to recognize that this unnamed woman with the 12 year flow of blood had been bleeding her whole life, the, for the whole life of the 12 year old little girl who Jesus also saved that day. Jesus starts in today's gospel by saving just two. 
And people of God, I can't help but think that Jesus smiles when he thinks of St. Mark's and says, look at my people go. Look at all they do for the love of their God. Amen. confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in every human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, you bring your healing power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer that we may discern your way for us in the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow and send rain for the soil. Bring your creation into harmony and balance. Give animals their food and provide healthy shelter for your people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all that you have made. God of grace, receive our prayer. God without equal, your steadfast love endures forever. Bring the leaders, elected officials, and peacekeepers of our towns and countries into understanding and unity. Especially we pray, O oh Lord, for those places where there is war and violence. We pray for, for Israel and Palestine. We pray for the Sudan and for Somalia. We pray for, for Ukraine and Russia. We pray for the peoples in Colombia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who strengthens you, lift up with your hand all who are suffering. Heal those who are brokenhearted and strengthen the weak and all in need. Especially today, we pray for your healing for Amber, Sally, Mecca, Jamie, Jim, Jack, Susan, Carol, Alice, Ruth, Cheery, Ken, Mike, Ray, Jan, Joan, Dom, Jody, and Barb. We pray for your presence upon Drew and Ann, Amber, Jeff, Mike, Tim, Madison, Mark, Eddie, Linda, Diana, Tom, Mark, Sandy, the whole St. Mark's family, for Ginny, Robin, Jack, Mel, and the Kaminsky and Marchetti families. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who gives power to the faint, challenge us to share the faith stories of what God has done in our lives. Open us to receive the new, unique ways God is at work in your people, especially those whose perspectives challenge our own. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who calls each star by name. We remember all who have died. And particularly today, we remember Karen's father and we remember B's daughter. Shelter all those who mourn with your mercy and care. Give us the hope promised by your salvation. Today, we also give thanks for Nana and Louise, for your unending love, for the life of Joanne, for friends, family, 
and volunteers in this congregation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be the God of Israel, who has redeemed his own. He raised a mighty Savior up from out of David's house. He has fulfilled the prophet's word and saved us from our foes as promised to our ancestors his covenant he's kept the peace of the lord be with you all let us share god's peace with one another Before we continue with with the offering prayer, I, I, I want to say that um, um, unfortunately our, our musician's name, Norman uh, Miller, was left off of, of the prayers that we offered this morning. And so and so please uh, know Norman that, that you are in our prayers and that and that and that we are praying for you and we offer that to God as well. Let us pray together the offertory prayer. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the wonder and the mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, 
Alleluia to the King of kings. Alleluia to the Lamb. Alleluia to the Lord of lords, who is the great I Am. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the create birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in Jesus' death and resurrection. And we look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. Make your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Lord, fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now behold the Lamb. Who bore all my sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Thank you for the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, who for a grace we may finish the race, the precious Lamb of God. Carry the blood of Christ shed for you. 
Norm, the blood of Christ shed for you. Be the body and blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ shed for you, Nancy. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, Joni. The, the body and blood of Christ given for you, Dom. The blood of Christ shed for you, Cheryl. The body and blood of Christ shed for you, Suzanne. The blood of Christ shed for you, Jean. The blood of Christ shed for you, Rick. The blood of Christ shed for you, David. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, Elsie. The body and blood of Christ shed for you, Paul. The blood of Christ shed for you, Howie. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of Christ shed for you, Beverly. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, Alice. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yourself to all the names. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. That's the one we needed. Thank you.